Hey, Nerd Herd, Dynasty Nerds, and we're talking ADP, not average dumb persons over here. It's ADP, for those that don't know. Man, there's some there's some crazy values. We got to get into it. Yeah, who's who's good value? Who's bad value? How do you how do you maneuver that startup draft? Let's talk about it. Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? And Jared Wackerly's on the board. Hello. It's one week before we uh, commence our rookie breakdowns. Man, I can't wait. I'm always excited to it's, start. It's scared, Jared. <laughs> it's a uh, year. <laughs> so he, didn't we realize, he didn't realize the rookies were coming right around the corner. Oh, right I'm, around I'm the ready. Corner. Yeah. Sneak and sneak. Rookie quarterbacks next week. We're starting off two episodes back to back quarterbacks, then running backs. Going back. Two back. weeks of running backs, right? Two weeks of running backs, three weeks of receivers. One week of tight ends. One week of tight ends. One week. Before the draft of just catch all, which we'll do a mock draft. Yeah, we'll do a mock Pre-draft, draft, catch all from from the cabin. No, that's post NFL post. draft. We do a yes. mock draft. Yeah, that'll be from the cabin. It'll, it'll be from the cabin. Trip. I'm looking forward to the cabin trip. trip. I am too. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. It is. I can't fun. wait. Fun time. It's a good weekend. Yeah. So we are today talking ADP. Yeah, we are. And if you go to and you check out the rankings page. You'll see on the right hand side ADP. So what we do here uh, at Dynasty Nerds, we started doing uh, probably like five months ago, is if you follow Dynasty Nerds on ta- uh, on Twitter, you follow Peter Bartowski on Twitter, that we run d- mock drafts probably Ooh, twenty a month. He said uh, he got forty four this month. Forty four. So now, I don't think he does that every month, but forty four. No, so. I did too uh, with him. So we want to make sure that we are constantly having updated ADP, right? Like sometimes when you see ADP, like if you go certain places, it could be skewed a little bit because it's just wide open or some sites will gather it in the beginning of the month. And then by week three, the ADP could be drastically different. We're trying to have a finger on the pulse, right? Not a past reading of somebody's heartbeat, but right now. I think I'm dead. Yeah. So up to date ADP is what we're trying to do. ADP is interesting too, because some people will be like, I don't I don't care where they're drafted. I just, I know who I like. And I, even if you're one of those people, it's good to have as much information as possible to know how other people are valuing these players. That's how the community is. I was going to say, isn't that guys. like, that's its main purpose. Yes. As, as far as I see it, you yeah. know, I, you, this isn't, you don't use ADP as a exact guide for your no. draft guys, but you, if you, maybe if you want somebody and you really are targeting a certain player, you know when you need to go get them. Right. In order to not get sniped. It just helps you in that kind of, in that respect. And, and even if you're not doing a startup, right. yeah. you just know their approximate value values in the community. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if you, like I use ADP in startups because, hey, I don't have to, I want this player, I want this player here. Oh, I can wait two more rounds. Even though mm-hmm. he, in my rank set, he's ranked significantly higher I could wait two rounds, and or it's, and it's not like you not it's not nothing bulletproof, but you're going by the odds, right? right. You, you look at it and they say odds are somebody can, else could also like him a lot right. and jump I, up. I can or? I can probably wait three rounds. I really like this guy. I, maybe I'll just wait, at least wait one more round, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of taking him a, a little bit way way too early and, and taking him just because you get pocket aces doesn't mean you're gonna win, baby. No, there ain't no guarantee. There's no guarantee. So, and like Garrett said, even outside of like a startup, I always follow ADP to see. I like to follow. Their, their, their uh, ebbs and charts, flows, ebbs yeah. and flows of their value because all of a sudden, if I see that a player drops in ADP, and what's really good about our ADP is since it's so live and up to date, is we are updating our player cards that should be out here really soon on dynasty.com. When you click on a player, it's going to follow their ADP chart as well. So if a player all of a sudden drops in ADP and the in the and the community is down on this player, I know it's a good buy opportunity if I'm still high on him. Or the opposite, if a player skyrockets like a Jordan Love into the first round of startup drafts, and I'm not all in on Jordan Love because, you know, my ADP is I'm an average dumb person, then I am going to go ahead and sell that person or Love or whoever it may be. There'll be some players in there. So we're going to go through our ADP, see where some value is. Maybe we're shocked. Maybe we're startled. Maybe we're suddenly stupid. Um, <laughs> suddenly stupid. Maybe we're suddenly succulent. stupid. Succulently sucker and succotash. 
Listen, you're good at alliterations. You should do that. I just want to yeah. have very good consistency here and just, you know, I want to be Anthony Richardson. So here's where I'm at. So we're going to go. This is Superflex Tight End Premium ADP. This is Superflex ADP. This is not Tight End Premium. It's not Tight End Premium? It no. says on top ADP, Superflex Tight End Premium. Did you write that in yourself? No. I got to send over from our mock draft expert who runs all our mock drafts. See? February. ADP. Is it the one I just sent you? No, Peter sent it to me personally. Okay, well, Peter you're looking person. at a different. You're looking at sheet. a different one than us because you said <laughs> send it over, and I said okay, I'll send it over, and then we all would have the same ADP. Well, it should be the same one because it's not though. Peter, no, we have eight, we have Titan Premium and non Titan Premium. Well, who is who is your uh, 18th <laughs> overall player? Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Boom, same thing. Well, there was no tight ends yet. There, there were like three more checks. There were no there were no tight ends yet. All right, hold on. Who's the first tight end off the board? What pick or what line? I guess it would be. It is Sam number Laporta. 29. 29, Sam Laporta. Okay. All right. We are looking at the same list. Look at well, us. Well, 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 Mr. I can't be wrong who's just right wrong. Yeah. Or maybe he's grumpy over there. there. Yeah, grumpy grumpers and grumpy Garrett. Hey, I was totally right earlier, and you were wrong, Jared. Yeah, suck I'm it. sorry grumpy I don't have access Garrett. to your private text suck conversations. It. You told me, hey, Nick and Brian told me. I said, you're wrong. Oh, you did call him grumpy. I did call him grumpy. Yeah. yeah I don't know why he called me grumpy. I didn't know either. I was yeah. like, that's pretty out of line of him to be yeah. doing it. I said, yeah. Mr. Grumpy. I yeah. mentally hand slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, where is we're HR? probably working with the same ADP. Maybe not. Allegedly. Maybe. We'll find out. Allegedly. Garrett and I are. Allegedly. <laughs> Matt and I are definitely working out yep. the same ADP. Allegedly awesome ADP. Let's go. <laughs> Attention Dynasty nerds. Want to play Dynasty like a pro? Check out FFPC, where serious Dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over 1,500 la- leagues with stakes ranging from $100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game. It's a community. With unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading, it keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single Dynasty League fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've completely revamped their Dynasty for Sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFPC Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC where your dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. So who's number one in the current Superflex Titan Premium market in ADP? Currently, we have Joshua Allen as the number one guy across the board, but their their average draft position is very close. Uh, Josh Allen is averaging 1.38 as far as where his draft selection is. And Pat Mahomes is 1.63. So it's more or less a coin flip because then everybody after that, it's it's clearly a different tier it's, because then yeah, you have threes. guys yep. in the fours, yeah, threes, fours that, are, yep. that are after that. So it's, where, it's those Where would two you guys. go here? Right now, I would... It's hard because my bias would be Pat Mahomes. I like Pat Mahomes more. I think he's, he's very consistent. Like, But Josh Allen has proven over the past... He just I mean, he's been points. the quarterback one over yep. four of the past five years. So I should probably take Josh Allen, but it would be hard for me to pass Pat Mahomes. I got the 1-1 one, one in the anniversary startup draft. Do you? I did. The one that you started. Shocker. I, dude, <laughs> sleeper. So convenient. I just hit a randomized buzzer bu- button on Sleeper, and it just put me in there. You were like, put me at top and randomize. I actually don't I actually don't want the 1-1, one, one, but I'm I'll just, take it. I'm just trading down. I'm taking Josh Allen. I'm just kidding. Right. Yeah, you should. Heads up, league mates. <laughs> I mean, that's, it, that's a solid pick. He is my one one. Uh, He's know. mine too. Yeah. So it's. But I but I really want it to be Mahomes. It's very but it's not. Listen, if I'm starting a franchise in the NFL, it's oh, Mahomes. like and it's not, not even close. close. Yeah, it's not even not close. Not close. Um, but from from a fantasy perspective, Josh Josh Allen just adds more on the ground, and he just scores more points. It's just that easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's NFL good and there's dynasty right. fantasy football good. Yep. So, yeah, I would take splitting hairs like you said. My first discrepancy is actually here at. 
the third overall player, and it's Jalen Hurts. So for me, I just I am still somewhat hesitant on the long term value of Hurts. Like I still don't love his arm long term. So what do you mean by long term? After five years. See, I, while I don't entirely disagree, that's just too far for me to worry about. I'm but, not, but it's not a worry. It's just, if I'm in a startup mm-hmm. and I'm at pick three, this is a player that, you know, these first couple of rounds that you just want to get players that you don't have, you don't have to worry about that position for long term. Mm-hmm. And the reason the quarterbacks go so long, is not just because they offer the most points is because you get the longest insulation, right? Like you get the longest value. So career, one, career. it's the hardest position to fill, but career wise, you can get 10 years out of player. You're not getting you get 10 years out of anybody. I mean, if a receiver comes in at 21 and they're a stud right off the gates, the odds of you getting 10 years are pretty slim out of that player. Maybe if you're lucky, a quarterback, you're almost guaranteed to get about 10 years if they're good. 15 to 17 even if I mean, they, Tom Brady excellent. played what twenty three seasons, twenty four seasons. Yeah. So for me, a guy Out, like Jalen Hurts, outlier. <laughs> outlier. But I mean, we look at our ADP. We got guys at 37, 38 years old that yeah. are still, you know, QB ones or QB twos. And I, and I, uh, there's some concern there for me. Sure, to start up. So uh, this is not a Jalen Hurts diss. It's just if I have any hesitation, like long term, like I would rather personally take CJ Stroud there, right? Like or. I would I would take Justin Herbert ahead of Jalen Hurts. I know that might sound stupid, and maybe it doesn't work out with Harbaugh, but like I believe in that arm talent and his talent more long term. Well, the, the next the next four guys are roughly within a pick of each other, so really it is kind of dealer's choice between Hurts, Stroud, Herbert, and Burrow. Uh, all those guys are really really close together as far as ADP goes. So I don't think it is a lock slam dunk that hurts is always going to be third i have him fourth personally uh, I, I i'm with you i actually have herbert then hurts then stroud who's your top okay. five in order garrett so it would be josh oh. allen patrick mahomes justin herbert jalen hurts cj stroud would be my top five in order matt what about you i'm gonna have to look i i know that i have josh allen mahomes and then herbert i have to i have to see who my fourth one is and when I was trying to do that, I knocked my <laughs> back over. Yeah. So get out of here. Just give me a second, all right? You're good. Rich, what's yours? Uh, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts, CJ Stroud. Oh, ours are identical. Hmm. Twinsies. I, I have two moves. Mahomes, uh, then Allen, then Burrow, then Stroud, then Hurts. Oh, so you got Burrow at three? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and those two guys are kind of in that next tier there. Uh, their ADP is almost identical at about six and a half. So Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow there. My only problem with Burrow is like, or actually no, I, I apologize, hurt, bro. Yeah. It's actually Burrow and uh, or it's actually Lamar and at yours. I have it up. I have it up. That's great, man. Do you have it up? You only want me to read it. <laughs> he said, that's great. Go ahead, man. For, you must be sucking up all the internet juice because I, mean, I can't get there. If, so you, go ahead. if you keep whispering to like that way, maybe I'll get there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Matt, you're getting old. Answer me. Mahomes. Ooh. Then you yeah. have Allen. Yeah. Oh. Then you have Herbert. Wait, I got my Mahomes first? That's yeah. a typo. Yeah. That's a typo. Then you have Herbert at three. Then you have Hertz, then Burrow, and then Stroud. Okay. That's how, a typo. How do you feel about that? I feel like somebody hacked my <laughs> stuff, man. Hacked? <laughs> I know I got Josh <laughs> Allen first, man. Uh, but so, I look, I'm looking and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's BS. <laughs> somebody screwed my, my rankings for sure. Do, do you guys kind of agree with how it's laid out? So uh, Lamar Jackson's kind of, uh, I, I misspoke earlier, Burroughs with that, that tier, and then Jackson's kind of in his own tier with Justin Jefferson, who's the first non-quarterback off the board. And we get four guys off the board before we get our next quarterback that are non-quarterbacks. So Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross, St. Brown right now as those four guys. Would you guys be comfortable taking all four of those non-quarterbacks ahead of the next few quarterbacks in Jordan Love and Anthony Richardson. Well, I just I just got my very first ever Jordan Justin Jefferson share. Yeah, you texted us. Good yeah. job. Um, Good job, Rich. And a super flex startup pre pick one eight. And I was like, I'm doing it. Then you didn't even take a quarterback in the second round. No nope. shooketh. Well, first of all, it's it's best ball. Sure. So it kind of changes my thought process just a hair because yeah. like, oh, I could 
I can get quarterbacks later and pile them and be okay. It didn't work out that way because quarterbacks went hot and heavy. I had to take Deshaun Watson as my first quarterback. Boo. I mean, uh, and Daniel Jones is my oh second man. quarterback. And Oof. I got to pick one seven to get JJ McCarthy. Okay. He's there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got my first Justin Jefferson shirt. That the should only, make it all better. The only thing I hesitate <laughs> here about is the next quarterback. It's Jordan Love. Because my my feeling, and it's, it's again, you, you call it, I hate when people are like, oh, my gut feeling tells me. It's not just that. It's like what I saw this year in the growth of this offense. Was I think that, Was after, that your Butch Davis, by the way? <laughs> that's my Butch <laughs> Davis. <laughs> oh, my God. What, wait, why did you take uh, Gerard Warren oh, over geez. Richard Seymour when everybody in the draft room agreed to take Richard Seymour? Oh, it was my gut. My gut feeling told me to take uh, Gerard Warren, big Gerard money Warren. One's a Hall of Famer. One's <laughs> probably not money had, Warren anymore. He had, about, he had about three years. Is I think I think of this time next year when we're doing this show, I think Jordan Love is going to be ahead of Lamar Jackson in, in Superflex startup ranks. I think he's going to be considered – I think he's going to jump a tier into, into that. I mean, if he performs rank. exactly the same as he did this year, he probably will. If Burrow misses a couple games, he'll jump Burrow, honestly. with it. He's only 25 years old. So, I just took Justin Jefferson ahead of them, and I probably would take C. Lamb there too, but I don't think I would take Amon or Jamar Chase – Okay. I honestly don't even know if I'd take CeeDee Lamb ahead of Jordan Love if it was me. And, and honestly, in our startup, Jordan Love actually went 1-9. I took Justin Jefferson 1-8, and Love went 1-9. And it was one of those things like, oh, can Love somehow like come back around? Sure. You know what I mean? Can I trade up to like 2-1? So one? so you're saying you're saying Love being below those guys to you is, is an issue, right? It's not even an issue. It's just... But it's I, a place that you might pounce. I think I would take... I think I would take love ahead of those guys yeah. beside Justin Jefferson. And now that I actually have a Justin Jefferson share. Like, I think I might even take Jordan love there. ahead of him just because the novelty's worn off for you now. I, I, I mean, I've got, oh, I got, dude. I took Brees Hall in the second. That's my first Brees Hall. I said, I was like, screw it. I got no Justin Jefferson. I got no Brees. This it's, is, this is my, my, it's my 25th league. Like <laughs> I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get a little silly this draft. I don't even care. Um, but for me, I feel like Jordan love at the, at the worst case is a safe, pick like from what i saw this year right like I, it's a safe pick to me so and to have a 25 year old quarterback that i believe could be a quarterback one for the next eight years yeah is more valuable than a wide receiver like think about receiver a wide receiver one for the next six years i guess is the best way i look at it yeah no i, I agree i think there's a better chance of a wide receiver coming into the league and getting into one of those spots than I do a, a quarterback. I just think a lot of these quarterbacks, it's going to take a lot for them to get up into that upper echelon. So I, Jordan, Jordan love. I, I try not to say I love him. Uh, <laughs> love it, I really love like what I saw. Last love. Year. Uh, I really love. like what I saw last year out of him. Sam and, and, and he took the step, you know, everyone was kind of curious as to what we were going to get with him being the starter. And I think he exceeded all of my expectations. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, that that alone kind of should. I think he's going to continue to climb up this list, and and I, th I think to your point, um, this time next year, I think he'll already be yeah. naturally above all these players. And I'd rather be ahead of the curve than behind it. Right. And when you and when you make that approach, like if you're willing to go Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, right? Would you rather have Justin Jefferson and like Tua, Justin Jefferson and Brock Purdy, Justin Jefferson and Dak? Or rather have Jordan Love and AJ Brown, yep. long term superflex is the way I would look at. It. Or Jordan Love, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jordan Love, Malik Neighbors, Jordan Love, Jalen Waddle, Puka, any other receiver out in that that category. Or double up and you know figure out the wide receiver somewhere else. You know, double up on the quarterbacks. And it, it's else. it's all how like yeah, it depends how it all flows yep. together. Now you also argue, would you rather have like Justin Jefferson and yeah Brock Kyler or something along those lines? So. It's interesting how you want to build your team, and but this is the ADP I always I've seen like every mock draft I've done, every real Pretty draft consistent. I've seen is Jefferson goes right around pick eight. Yep, we're right on there. He he, so he seven break, quarterbacks, and then he, he breaks goes. that tier and, every and, once in a while. He'll go ahead of Lamar, yep. uh, but I never see him go yep. ahead of like Burrow and Herbert and no. Stroud. Typically, I. Hey guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Woo. on sleeper right now. The dynasty so GM, pretty. you can use the analyzer. That you can use 
the uh, the the trade calculator, and my favorite thing is the inbox, right? Where all your trades from all your sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push trades through the actual sleeper at and. Right now, we could be more excited to be partners with them. And right now, if you don't know, they are doing DFS. And I know how many people that play Dynasty play DFS as well. And right now, there's not a better place to play DFS than Sleeper. They're offering up to 100 times their, your entry, the highest payout in the whole DFS market right now. You can track your fantasy players and your Sleeper picks in real time. All you got to do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on Sleeper you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share with your friends and get reward together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Oh, um, no way. And get your deposit match and have Friendly. a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues, and now even a Dynasty GM in one spot is fully operational inside Sleeper right now. And then when you're a Nerd Herd member, you get that full access to that. And remember, you also want to download the Dynasty Nerds app because they're both in there. Check it out. Check our friend Sleeper. Check out our DFS. Use that promo code NERDS. Get your whole estate. <laughs> I should say. And Love's the only one right now that I would feel comfortable. Would he you take like, Anthony Richardson in the first round? Not not over those not over those guys. Because right now he's right on the outside of the first round. So basically what we have here at pick 12, it would be Jordan Love. Pick 13 would be Anthony Richardson. And then two running backs at 14 and 15. Uh, with Bijan and Brees Hall. Uh, so any of those guys that you feel like should be in the first round, are you pretty comfortable with how that first round shakes out? I'm pretty good with that. Be, let me ask you guys this. Is there, what's the scenario that you guys would feel comfortable taking Bijan or Brees that high in the first round, say? Would would there be any sort of scenario where, like, I got to get this guy no, like you did with with Jefferson. Is there because I because to me no running backs in the first ever. Yeah, I have a hard time doing that, but they're here. But this, know, is, they're, well, they're this right is on the cusp. This is a second round, and I took Brees well, as the first running back out the board. I had pick one eight, so it'd be pick two four. This is average draft position, and they're they're where like thirteen or fourteen and fifteen, so they're right on the cusp. There's got to be there's yeah, got to be drafts where they fall in where they're in the first round. I, I think if if Bijan had done pretty darn close to what our ceiling expectations were for him in year yeah. one, then I think I would be much more apt to do that because of how tough it is to find a difference making running back, especially that young. But it was a subpar rookie year compared to expectations sure. overall. And you could put a lot of that on the coach. You can put a lot of that a on of a that. lot of different things. Yeah. But still, without the true like proof in the pudding, it would be really hard for me to take a running back – ahead of receivers or quarterbacks. So obviously right. all that stuff has changed. The coach has changed. It has. The scheme has changed. But I still haven't gotten to see it I know you still haven't gotten to see it. Is that just Bijan you're talking about, though? But yeah, Bruce. well. I think Brees ahead of Bijan. I wouldn't. It's a, it's a, They're lumped together, but I'm yeah, specifically really talking about Bijan. have multiple Bijan shares. I'm, <laughs> I'm specifically talking about Bijan here. Yeah. All that stuff's changed, and this might be your only chance to get him, right? right. Yeah. Before he shoots way up. Is that in the back of your head at all? Well, I think, and here's you the thing, I mean? though, too, though. Like, if you're, and this is where it's always different between making trades and startup and why ADP is important because a startup draft is so much different than, like, positional, right? Like, if you go to Bijan and you need a quarterback, you want Kyler, I'm like, hey, dude, I just can't give Kyler straight up for a running back. Like, I might need a little bit more. There's, you know, the way I would like it, or Dak or something along those lines or maybe Caleb Williams. But no one here at the back end of the second that you're not picking for another 20 picks right. or so, like all the running backs are going to get pretty eaten up. So you probably feel pr pretty comfortable. Like, Hey, I'll get another quarterback. I'll get a receiver um, there. Whatever, whatever I don't go, like I'll get one, but I won't get another running back. I won't get a Brees Hall or a B. John because that's a tier, right? Definitely during a startup, like Christian McCaffrey, he's, he's a fantastic running back, but he's older. So like to get a 22 year old guy like Brees Hall and B. John, it's, pr it is pretty hard to pass up. Knowing, knowing if you could if you could draft correctly, that you can make it work, and and that's that's what I'm asking you. Like, is is there a scenario where you can picture yourself doing that? It sounds like yes, but not in the first round. Maybe if no, it's in, I think right here in the, the top second, of second. Yeah, second Bijan's round. our twelfth overall ranked player a consensus. Okay, and then it goes Richardson, Love, then Brees. I was gonna say I, there are some scenarios I could see myself taking him in the first, just because 
even though it's it's tough because I haven't seen it yet, we still haven't seen it necessarily from Anthony Richardson. Right. Yeah. We, you know, Jordan Love, I do <laughs> like Rich Jordan Love, enough, but it's but he's, he's consistent. Garrett, you're lowest on love between all of us. I was going to say, I figured I would be the lowest on love. I think you have him at 25. Uh, well. oh, I have him that low. What a sucker. Yeah. All right. I'll move him up, but. Yeah, uh, you better. Yeah, you better. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, just, I'm going back and forth comparing <laughs> rankings to ADP just between all of us. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll definitely move him up a little bit. Sorry, 22. 22. Yeah. I'll, I'll move him up to probably 14, 15, 16, probably somewhere in there. Because uh, I, I have a hard time differentiating him from some of the other quarterbacks and things like that. But I do like right now with how the current landscape is, I'm much more apt to take a running back early than I have been in past years. And me too. And, and, and I feel like once you like release that pressure off the valve mm-hmm. of – because you get to the point where you're like, okay, it's super flex time premium. I want to get my two quarterbacks. I need my stud receiver. Oh, I want to get a good tight end. You're through four rounds. We in around five. There's no good – like, you don't like any of the running backs there. So, no. once you get one of those guys, it releases that pressure. And you're like, okay, there's a ton of receivers left sure. where, that I feel comfortable with. There is – I can still grab my tight end there. So, for me, I think have one of those top guys. And they're also just a tremendous – trade piece where it gives you the opportunity if the draft doesn't pan out the way you want it to, or the better yet, the season doesn't pan mm-hmm. out. The you want it to where the whole strategy that you did to build around and not take those quarterbacks early. That's a piece that's going to get you something back in return that you feel very comfortable because with. every team come playoff time needs another running back. Like it, it's very rare to look at a team and say, they couldn't use another running back. Like almost every team <laughs> could use another running back. But when you're talking about those two specifically, it's, it's funny you say that because I mean, it's like I laughed out loud because it, it, it's the scenario that you always, you're always looking for it. Yeah. Oh, everyone is. And if you're knocking on the door with a yeah. Brees Hall or Bijan, like that's that's a whole different. It's a big you know, talk because yeah. you we know we get to playoff time. Like hey, I'll give you Joe Mixon for your first. Like, do I need a running back? He's he's doing well. Okay, you know, or even like a guy like Devon Achan, right? Like Devon Achan, and then you're like, okay, yeah, it's gonna get you a lot. Brees and Bijan are on a whole nother level. Sure. Because now we're talking quarterbacks. Like, there's not many running backs that are, like, you could knock on a door and say, hey, what do you want for, I need Trevor Lawrence. I need a quarterback. I, my strategy of passing on quarterbacks in the first two rounds completely backfired. Mm-hmm. I need to reset. Can I get Trevor Lawrence? Like, it's that's something that's safe. Like, the running back won't do me any good long term. Those kind of running backs open that door for you. Absolutely. Did you say Gibbs is... Up there too, and that in not that. far off. He's not far. He's the third running back off the board in my eyes in a startup, and then yeah. then McCaffrey, and then H. What's his ADP, Kyron. Garrett? What's Gibbs ADP? Gibbs ADP currently, he's overall our twenty first guy, and his ADP reflects at twenty one point two eight. So yeah, going right there at the end of the second round, pretty consistent. And, and and the mock drafts I've done where I put it myself in for the anniversary league. I just did one on today for the mm-hmm. ADP league. I took the one spot, and I did one the other day for my account for the one spot. And Gibbs was there both times at the back end of the second. Mm-hmm. And since all the receivers are gone, I was like, okay, I'm taking Gibbs, Gibbs. And I'm either taking another quarterback like Kyler Murray or a guy like Sam Laporta, mm-hmm. someone on there being tight end premium. And then knowing that the receiver position, once you get past that second round, we'll get through the ADP here. I feel like that tier of receiver is pretty big mm-hmm. for me. Like it's like a, it's a multiple round tier there. So I had the liberty to say, okay, I can grab the running back, I can grab the tight end, and I'll be happy with the other two receivers I get when I come back. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let, let's go back up just a tiny bit real quick. So the 16th one off the board is actually not a player, but we have the early 2024 first. Now, soon we'll have it broken down to pick 101, pick 102, pick 103. Uh, so that will be coming at some point. But – Let's just quickly, because I know we kind of touched on it a few weeks and ago. it's weird we don't have that in there now, because in our mock drafts we're doing now, it's Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr. So it should be picks 1-1, one, 1-2. One, one, right. One, I think it's because it. it's pulling it from ADP yeah, or from our rankings and then ADP Correct. together. Yeah. I think it's what's making it weird. But all that being said, let's, let's separate out the top three and maybe even four picks that you would consider early. Just real quickly, we don't have to go on a ton of explanation. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr. Where would those guys fall in this range? I think right there. It's where I've seen them go. I've seen Caleb Williams go pick 112, anywhere from pick 111 to 2-2 is where I've seen Caleb go. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. is usually 
two picks right behind him. I, I was going to say, I so would have him above, like, Jordan Love, Amon Ross, St. Brown. Like, that's where I would be taking So I wouldn't take him ahead of Jordan Love because I'll take the for sure thing. And then Jaden Daniels, like Drake made the league neighbors, they've all been going in the third round. Okay. All of them. Like, no, I haven't seen any of those guys go in the second round. Yeah. Like, high third, right around there. Uh, where would you have Marvin? Uh, Marvin, it would be right above Garrett Wilson. So right here, right about here. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the same way. I, I feel like those guys, those players go really close. It just comes down to whether you like the running back or I mean the other, another quarterback here. It really, I mean, it's Bijan, Bryce, Trevor, right? I mean, like as far yeah. as our rankings go, um, and then Garrett Wilson. So I, it, that's kind of the range, right? I, I might even take him above Trevor Lawrence. Is that crazy? No, I don't think that's crazy at all. And that's the so. thing, like, this is where, you know, we have the early 2024 first, but honestly, I could I could see an argument with picks one through four going before Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You know, you, you can make an argument for Daniels and May and, and Marvin Harrison. Like, I mean, at this point, Jaden Daniels, he might present more fantasy upside than, yeah. than Trevor Lawrence. Drake May is a good athlete as yeah. well and got a good arm. Like, all of these guys, I think, especially once we start seeing the landing spots and whatnot, yeah. I would not be surprised if all of these guys go early second round, if not first round of startups. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, they have the pre-NFL Draft 2024 Best Ball is live on Underdog. Draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the Dynasty Nerds film room. Play in $3 contest all the way up to $1,000 contest. Draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup. You need to get in on this action ASAP. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code NERDS. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 for new members only. And yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERD. So you get all our tools, all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1 800 Gambler. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1 800 Next Step. In New York, call 1 877 Hope New York. In Tennessee, 1 800 889 9789. I just started getting into my quarterback tape pretty deep here, mm-hmm. and I, I will say, from a fantasy perspective, Jaden Daniels is way closer to uh, Caleb Williams than I thought he would be mm-hmm. from a fantasy perspective. And there's a lot of people in the industry that I trust that have Jaden Daniels ranked higher. Yeah. Um, and I was just talking to our friend Colonel Chris Meeker. Um, I think it was yesterday. And he's like, I would take Jaden Daniels 10 out of 10, in Dynasty, 10 mm-hmm. out of 10 times ahead of Caleb Williams. He's like, and I watched every single game on both. Like, yeah. I watched every single game in the film room. And for me, it's he told me it wasn't even close for him. Wow. Um, oh, above K- uh, Caleb Williams? Uh, Caleb. Wow. Okay. From, a, from a dynasty I haven't dug in enough pr- to, perspective. To, I, you know, next week I will have a much better opinion on that. Dude can run. Yeah. He can, he can run. He's got a really good arm. He's got a good, he's got a good deep ball. He's, got, he's accurate. So, the yeah. The quick I mean, glimpse I saw of him, there were some inconsistencies. That's the only thing I saw. But it was a quick glimpse. I mean, it was an early in the season game that I watched. So, I'm okay with him going ahead of Trevor Lawrence, if you believe. Like, yeah. If you believe, mm-hmm. right? So, and sometimes it just... But the one problem there, though, is in a startup, and this even goes with Caleb Williams. When you make those guys your first pick overall or your second pick overall, yeah, you are taking... It's a big risk. A big risk with a big reward. And a reward, sometimes it's like that risk, it's almost not worth it because the reward is a couple spots higher. Like for Caleb Williams, you take to 111, you're hoping he goes up five, six spots. Right. It's, it's, you, you want them to enter that top tier of quarterbacks. Or the likelihood they could drop down all the way down 20, 30 spots. It, I will say there is a slight difference between ADP and value because just because they're ADP, they're back to back, doesn't mean that they're always close together. Correct. So even though, you know, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are only four spots ahead of Joe Burrow. They're consistently they're yeah, getting picked. in a trade. Yeah, I want a lot more for Joe Burrow yeah. or for Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen than I do Joe Burrow. So it is one of those kinds of things where if Caleb Williams or wh- whichever one of these quarterbacks were to enter that top tier, even though they're only moving up a few spots ADP wise, 
their overall value and what you would get in return for them could could skyrocket. Yeah, and that's and that's why you take them there because right. it could skyrocket. But again, there's so much risk there's there. A in there's ball. a lot. I mean, there's a lot. You're taking a lot of risk. We talk about it all the time. Quarterbacks 50 50. I I, I have a very hard time yeah. taking rookie quarterbacks in in the first two rounds. I have a very hard time doing it, which means I won't get them over right. a proven guy. Yeah, over a proven person. Yeah. So. And if you do, you yep. just got to make sure when you do your draft that you have to go, like, you can't go, you can't go Kayla Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Dayton Daniel. You can't do that. I mean, you if can. you do, you are. But it's it's all, you're all in. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that's a recipe. You stepped on a landmine and you just hope that, it's not going to explode. That's a recipe to see in five years. You know what I mean? Like, you're really setting, you could potentially set yourself back. But we were talking about all these players that could go above a Trevor Lawrence pretty easily and pretty quickly. Guy was quarterback 13 last year, and he was he was dinged up. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I think we should kind of remember what he has, or I guess not has been because he hasn't done it really yet. I was going to say, that's the still, hard part. He hasn't he really still has ever proven it. He still has potential to to outperform his, his position that he had last year just based on being healthy. But even if he's, even if he's hypothetically, let's say he jumps to quarterback, does he move up in ADP at all? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he would over eighteen because right now it's that's really good value. I don't think he would move if he. I think he would have to be a top five quarterback. I mean, look at where Jordan Love is. Jordan Love, he was top five, and he's only a couple spots ahead. So I don't. I don't think Trevor Lawrence moves up a lot if he just gets in the top eight, top ten. Uh, like, he moves into the first round, like back end of the first round. Maybe Probably, I think he if he he he'd jump into right around like that. Anthony Richardson spot. He would he, he would be above the guys that we were just talking about. Running above Drake May and J- yeah. probably. And the <laughs> we'll see how they do, but right. I mean, unless they have a CJ Stroud esque rookie or, season. Um, which if I, I, if I can get a twenty six year old quarterback that I know that I feel I don't know, but I feel very comfortable being a quarterback one for the foreseeable future, then that's my pick in the first and second round. If there's a quarterback there in the second round that I'm looking at that I feel comfortable with there, then I'm bypassing every receiver, every running back. Every, it does not matter. So, but we're not there right now. Like, we have the Trevor Lawrences. Yep. We have Dak Prescott. We have Tua Tagovailoa. We have Kyler Murray. And those guys are all great. Like, Kyler Murray is probably, Kyler Murray is probably some of the best value in a startup right 100%. now. The absolute best value. I tried to trade up desperately in my startup because Kyler Murray went in the third round to start up. I offered every team trying to move to get up, and obviously it was not enough to get Kyler Murray, and I wish I would have tried more because now I end up with Deshaun Watson, and I could have had Kyler Murray. Sure. Well, there's there's obviously a lot to that we could get into as far as ADP, and we've really only touched, like, the first two rounds. Uh, some of the most uh, important rounds because they, they are. But it's your cornerstones. What, what player is looking through here? Are there any that stand out to you guys as being significantly lower or significantly higher than you would expect them to be as potential. Like, oh, this is a guy I would move up for, or th- the value that the community has seems to be a lot different than the value that I would personally place on this player. Because, you know, looking at their ADP and all the players around him, I like all of the guys around him th- better than that guy. I mean, I see TJ Hawkinson here with an ADP of 39 overall, which I think is uh, injury bias. I think that's really good value. I know he's still tight end too, but in super flex tight end premium league, I would feel very good about getting him at the very top of the third round Mm -hmm. there. So I think that's um, pretty good value there. I think get in, I think Travis Etienne's a little high for me at 40 ahead of guys like in a super flex league, Jared Goff. Like, I don't understand that one, you know, getting a quarterback, that he was a quarterback one last year is probably going to get extended here really soon. I would much rather have the quarterback than a guy like Travis Etienne um, at running back or two that jump off the page right up at first for me here. So, so the guy I did a quick analysis basically off of based off our average our average ranks uh, against ADP and guys that have like a large a large number here. Saquon Barkley, he's a guy that we have him on our average ranked around forty eight and. You know, 47, and he's going off the board 69. So, you know, we, t- we talked about, we'll, or we're going to talk about him later in, in the uh, Nerd Herd episode as a, as a free agent guy that, that could land in the spot and really kind of outperform um, 
this sort of ADP coming off the board at 70. So I think he's a nice value. I think, I think Javante Williams is another guy that's about a 20 point differential between our average. Our average is lower than the, the ADP. Uh, we have 68 um, as our average or 63 is our spot and 88 is where he's getting drafted. So uh, Javante Williams, but these are, these are running backs, you know, so these are, these are might be guys that you can get a little bit later in drafts. If you miss out on a guy early, that like we were just talking about, some of the high end running backs that can that can still perform. That's and really good ADP. That's real good value on Saquon. Right. I mean, it's it's almost the same value on both those guys, and, and you can get them about a round apart as well. So you might be able to double up kind of later in later on in your draft and get both those guys and really kind of hit a home run at the and, running. Back and, and Rich, I I messed up earlier. I was looking at average. So yeah, that was our average rankings. So that makes uh, the the buy for Hawkinson even better because his ADP is actually fifty. Yeah. So that I'm with you. So that's fantastic. even way better. Like so, he he screams out for me. Um, great value right now, and it and, then, and you'll see that. You know that's why it's really, when players get injured, definitely early in the year, like I they scream by for me. Like I love to go out and get those guys because people are usually desperate for the help right there, and I'm willing to sacrifice um, a positional loss or a draft pick for that player knowing that like as long as they're a guy like Hawkinson, it has long-term value still so he screams out good value for me you said saquon uh what about you garrett you eyeing some other guys up here yeah one and it's it's just kind of a a product of the guys that tend to be at the top of a tier versus the bottom of the tier but i look at uh two specific wide receivers and tyree kill and, and chris olave those guys are at the the, the top of that kind of tier of either extremely high performing veterans that are a little bit older or young guys that still have a lot of game left in them, but have, have shown something like both those guys and even Brandon Ayuk, like all three of them are kind of back to back to back in rankings for wide receiver, uh, or I should say an ADP for wide receiver. And I, I would much rather just wait a couple rounds and take Drake London and take, you know, DK Metcalf, Diego and Collins. Take, yep. I'll take all those guys. So those, and granted they DJ have more. to, they have to fall somewhere, but but Drake London. I mean, I I understand he's got some upside. He hasn't shown anything yet. You would rather wait around and get a guy that you haven't seen I mean, almost it, anything from. I would take DJ Moore rather than rather than take a, Brandon Ayuk or yeah or Ayuk or or if you want to go young, I, I would much rather go Alave or Ayuk. What just one round earlier and get that guarantee rather than a guy that we haven't really seen much out of. I think a better way to phrase that is, at at what point would you be willing to once you take a guy like Tyreek Hill, and right, right here is showing he's going the very top of the third round. Mm-hmm. So what that at that point, you have to pivot. And I did this in our Ohio Dino draft up, and I'm actually back-to-back champs in that league. <laughs> at what point do you, like, okay, you're saying, you know what, I know this is dynasty, but championships are everything, and I can go back-to-back champs here on all these fools. Do you pivot and say, okay, I like the Tyreek Hill value, I'm going to change my whole dynasty startup here, and I'm going to dr- grab great players now, and I'm going to try and win back-to-back championships. And whatever happens after that, I'll figure it out. Like, do you guys ever approach startups like that? Where like, I, I, I would, once you take kill, that's the move, right? I would never approach it that way. But if something maybe a little bit earlier has dictated it, or if if I see a draft falling a certain way, where those are all the values. Coming up, then you might have to. Pivot. So where would Tyreek Hill have to be? Because again, once you take Hill, you pivot, right? Like you're trying to win now. I need to hop in in a second. You guys finish this, but there's something that just sh- I'm shook it, shook it, shook over it. here. So you guys finish this, and then I gotta get this out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think you know this is obviously the draft. Where, where are we at in the draft? We're in like the the third. So Tyreek Hill would be the very top of the third round. Yeah. So you'd be you you'd end up with like pick say you had pick listen I would have to have some one really, three I was gonna say I would have to have some nice solid picks first where I felt really good about them and with no risk but high upside guys and then if Tyreek fell to me and I seen a lot of youth already come off the board then that's when you go all right the value coming up might be all these older guys I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna go for the jugular here in the next couple of years that's that's at least how I would approach it that would be the only way I would flip that switch this early. And like, so where that, my question would be like, where would that value be on Terry kill? Like not the top of the third it had to be the back end of the third. Oh or yeah. 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 The fourth. Then. Yes. Or like it to be something like that, like in the fourth. Cause I think I got Christian McCaffrey that draft in the fourth round. I think it was somewhere around there. It was end of the third or beginning of the fourth. 
It was some, and remember, this was two years ago too. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was really good value there. And I took Devonte Adams right afterwards. So mm-hmm. and it's, and it, cause it's curious cause you get to a point where you're like, maybe you make a silly move and you go Christian McCaffrey in the third. And then all of a sudden Tyreek Hill staring you in the fourth and boom, you, and you're off and running. And you're going for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause that, there, there comes a point where the certain teams have to make that move. Right. Cause they just, they, they, they feel like they can't pass up that value for me for the most part. I know it did that league. I, I usually don't, I try to draft a team that can win now, but still gives me like four years in those first like five rounds. Like I really try to avoid players outside of maybe quarterback that are over the age of like 26 years old in my first four picks. Yeah. Just because I want those picks to be my cornerstone players. I don't want to worry about those in a rookie draft coming soon. Uh, totally. And, and depending on who you're playing with and how experienced they are, um, it could uh, drafts could go a whole bunch of goofy different ways. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. You get in, you get in a startup draft with a bunch of people that just started and they have X thought in their brain and, the, and maybe they've talked to three of their friends and now all of a sudden their three friends who've just started playing dynasty also have that X thought in their brain. And all of a sudden just a big group of players is gone that normally would be there much later and you, you got to pivot. Um, so it, it is definitely, um, it's a, it's a fluid situation. It's going to be, you know, obviously so draft specific, I guess. So what shook it to you? Yeah, well, get it, let's get after this. James Cook, Rashad White, and Isaiah Pacheco are currently going off the board between picks 61 and 68. Okay? Hated it. So the, we're, we're talking early sixth round value there. Then after that... After all of those players, we have Saquon, oh. Tajay Spears, and Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Are the next three guys. What are we doing here? How in the world are Isaiah Pacheco, James Cook, and Rashad White going ahead of Josh Jacobs, Tajay Spears, and Saquon Barkley? That makes zero sense to me. Because people in startups, I'm gonna I'm gonna and go in dynasty, I'm gonna look at their, their they get, where they finished last year. They get those drunk glasses for youth. Like, I think sometimes people get in startups or in Dynasty as a whole, they get over, over excited about like, oh, this player is only tw-. like they're they're not even more paid attention about like the player itself. They're just they want the youth. Yeah, and definitely like a player like 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 Rashad White, dude. Like Tampa Bay today came out and said head coaches like, yeah, Rashad White had a good year, but you you need two running backs. We need to bring something to, to lighten his load a little bit. And then we talked about Rashad White as a sell a yes, month ago. Totally. So But here here's where they get where it's coming. Rashad White, fourth overall right. last year. James Cook, twelfth overall. Isaiah Pacheco, fifteenth overall. All younger than Saquon, who was thirteenth overall. Yeah. So that's where this I mean that, that's where it's coming from. I, sure. You, you know, you're you're saying But I, I think the hard part is we we cannot draft players based on what has happened. No, I agree. It's based on what we think will happen. And I would take all three of those players, Jacobs, Spears, who's yep. a younger guy, and and Barkley, a hundred times out of a hundred over all three of those guys ranked ahead of them. Yeah, I mean those are I mean those are good value. When you're looking at our overall ranks, like our rank set. So what's the best value in our top one twenty five compared to ADP? So we look at guys like you know, at, at the quarterback position here in ADP, we have a guy like Daniel Jones, who I just lost. <clears throat> oh, there he is. Daniel Jones, we have him ranked currently at 96 overall, and he's ADP of 121. And I found so far, like, I, in my mock drafts and in my actual startup, I got Daniel Jones, like, real good value. You know, because coming off a bad year when he's healthy and, and rumor that he might lose his job as well. So, mm-hmm. like... Value wise, we have him twenty two spots ranked higher than he's going. We mentioned Saquon, Javante Williams. Where is Javante Williams at in here? I already went over it. He's uh around eighty something ish okay. in in the rankings. 80, Eighty eight and ADP. Yeah. Okay. Jackson Smith and Jigba. We have him ranked currently as forty third overall player, going at fifty seven. So about a whole another round. Pass there. He has ADP right now fifty seven point eight. We have him ranked at forty three. We have Devon Achan out here 
Devon Achan has a current 45 ADP, and we have him ranked as 33. So, another, again, a full round, round yep. of value you're getting mm-hmm. there in the fourth round. And I will say this. He is the one player, when I do the mock drafts I, I get into, the live mock drafts and my startup, where I want him so bad to draft him there and like the third round or the very top of the fourth, or but usually somewhere in the third round, but I just can't like, it doesn't work out to grab that running back there. And I'm trying to find a way either this last one I took Brees, like, and I'm not taking two running backs in the top four. Sure. Right? That's not happening. But HM seems like he screams good value right now when it comes to draft position, Dallas Goddard tight end premium leagues. He's going down here at Dallas Goddard is, Currently going as the 120th or 119th. 119th overall. Yeah. And where do we have him ranked at? 111. So eh, a okay. little bit. Of, it's a little bit of a value. So another guy here that I think screams good value is Jacoby Myers. Has ADP of 142. We have him currently ranked at 119, only 27 years old. Uh, Show last year he was a top 36 fantasy football wide receiver. We don't know what's going on there at the quarterback position or – they say Devontae Adams is going to be there long-term. He's going to be 32. He screams really good value. He's a player that I've been targeting pretty heavily out there as well. Yeah, on the opposite end of things, uh, Travis Kelsey's ADP yeah. drastically higher than we have him. His ADP is 66, uh, almost 67 there, and we have him going uh, in our rankings as around 92. So He's like been getting three, over Three, four ever rounds. Ago. Um, a big name, another guy that's a big name and kind of kind of a bad value at this point is George Kittle. Um, we have him ranked 95th in our Superflex tight end premium. He's coming off the board around 78. Um, so that one's, uh, I, you know, it's a big name. But if you dig into the numbers on him, he has usually four or five solid games and, and he's kind of hard to rely on week to week. MIA, yep. a lot of the other ones. So, yeah, I, I'll – I'll, that dead zone of tight end, like I'm, I'm good. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll avoid that all day. What about Bryce Young? Here, currently we have him ranked at 77. He's going around 66.3 overall ADP, so almost a almost a round ahead. I, but I don't argue that. Like I, if there's a if there's a player I'm going to draft run round ahead, it's going to be the quarterback and a young quarterback and take sure. the, and take the gamble on. He's him. he's not someone I would do it for. I was gonna say I just don't but, trust him. Um, the concepts there. The concept I understand why the the yeah. ADP is inflated because there's people that just haven't given up on him. He was last year's number one pick overall. I uh, just didn't see anything I really liked on tape last year um, to to make me kind of go out on a limb for somebody like. Hopefully that. the new head coach helps and hopefully they get him a playmaking receiver. Yeah, no, I I think a lot can change because I think Frank Reich has kind of shown that he's not NFL head coach worthy uh, at this point in his career. So it can't get much worse, I don't think, than what it was last year for Bryce Young. All right. That's about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so ADP. Check it out on DiceNerds.com. Get on there, check out the rankings, check out ADP, and see where you fit. Because, I mean, it only takes one person to really kind of get there and fall in love with the player and take him a couple rounds earlier. And, again, ADP is really good because it shows you where the consensus is and lets you maybe – take that player around ahead of time to make sure you get your guy. Because again, if you're not picking for another 15 spots and that's your guy, then you take them. And, and this is guy. something that's worthwhile checking often because with how many drafts we put in, this is going to change constantly. And we remove other drafts to make sure that the ADP is only the most recent stuff. So uh, this, this ADP will fluctuate, especially this time of year Free agency coming up, the draft coming up. Like this is going to drastically fluctuate. So and, definitely something to keep and checking. With that in mind, Zamir White was a guy that's on our list as a, a big time value. Once free agency hits, his ADP might go up. If Josh Jacobs mm-hmm. doesn't sign back with the Raiders, which all signs point to him not signing back with mm-hmm. it, that's a guy that might be a value right now, but in two weeks mm-hmm. it might not be a value. It might go the other way. Sure. And, a- and ADP has value, the historical charts. And yeah. we plan on going forward on dinosaurs.com is charting this pretty heavily. So like I mentioned the player cards, we have an update coming out pretty soon. If you click on a player, we're going to get very in-depth and detailed on these players and their player card, and part of that will be their ADP and their historical ADP, and we're going to be able to make sure you track all of that. So we'll be back on tomorrow's episode. We're going to play a little game. 
Ooh, uh, to yeah. kind of get a little light and get a little loose in here before we break into our two month rookie <laughs> breakdown here of rookie. Uh, it's about to be rookies. a grind. It's about to be a grind. So I can't wait. We'll see you tomorrow. Adios. <laughs>